Do you remember the first time you were blamed? Or how about the first time somebody told you what you should think, feel, do, or believe? Well, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to talk about what creates a blame shifter and how that then leads into creating the worst day cycle in this person. Now, let's go back to those original two questions. And the first one was your, your first memory of being blamed. Now, most of us will probably think of maybe your partner or best friend or coworker, you know, recently blamed you for something. But if you trace that back, do you see where it leads? Childhood, right? Now, was it a teacher, coach, pastor, a friend, um, parent? Most likely it's a parent, grandparent an authority figure, somebody that played an important role in our life, because I don't know about you, but I haven't met a parent who doesn't blame shift. Let me ask you this. Did your parents at any time say anything like, you guys, or maybe you're an only child, you Susie, you David, right there, they're blame shifting. Just by starting the sentence off, you guys are driving me crazy. You guys won't leave me alone. If you guys would, if you wouldn't just... All of that's blame shifting, all right? So blame, we're not born blame shifters. It's something that is placed into us. We're taught to blame shift. Now, this video isn't for the narcissist that's way out here on the spectrum. This is for, you know, people that didn't, you know, didn't swing out to that, okay? All of us at certain points in our lives, blame shift. It's a question of, you know, how severe is it, okay? So let's talk about why this is so important to understand and, and how this creates the worst day cycle. Well, think of yourself in that moment when you're being told what you should think, feel, believe, or do. Now, I'm not talking about the healthy, way, the healthy ways parents mod, um, moderate our behavior and teach us things, you know, how to eat correctly and all these different things. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how when a parent, because of their own unmet emotional needs or their own inability to navigate their emotions, this is when they blame shift and they try and make us responsible to take care of them and be different. We need to be quiet. We need to stop. I'm just, leave me alone, right? They're, they're blame shifting. They're saying, you are the problem. I can't contain myself. I don't want responsibility as your mother or father right now. I want to go take a nap, I, whatever it may be. I want to cook dinner in peace. I want to read my paper. I want to watch my TV show, whatever the situation is. They're placing responsibility on you to change, to think different, to believe different, to act different, and to feel different so that they don't feel responsible for you. Well, that's where we learned it. We watched mom and dad shift the blame onto us that we are somehow the problem. Now, here's why this is so critical, and this is what traps us in the worst day cycle. In that moment, when mom and dad were perfectly imperfect, could you leave? Could you leave and take care of yourself? No. You learned you were trapped. You were too four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 years old. Your life and food and clothing and shelters depended on them. Your survival depended on them. You had to take the blame. This is what creates the worst day cycle. It's a traumatic experience and the overwhelming fear of having our reality skewed of, wait a minute, Kenny, what are you doing with a picture of Donald Duck behind you? You see Donald Duck, right? Don't you see his big orange beak? It's a purple painting, but that's what happens when our parents blame shift us. They're telling us that painting, the way we see the world, the way we think, feel, believe, and act within the world, we, as a person, are wrong, defective, that somehow we're doing it incorrectly. That's an incredibly injurious experience, and we are trapped in it. Well, now we've learned, wait a minute, if things get too big emotionally, I'm going to put responsibility on somebody else. Now, do you see why 
parents do this, why every adult does this. There's a tremendous advantage. Now, most people do this and they're completely unaware because we don't teach this is what's happening and that parents do this and they're perfect because we just don't even talk about it. Like I was watching a documentary the other night about that girl who sent text messages to the boy and he eventually took his life. And they completely glossed over how the boy was physically abused by his father. Well, that creates a child who's going to take, who, who's going to be, who's going to seek out and allow himself to be bullied by somebody. But they act like, oh, that had nothing to do with it. Like it was just one sentence. They just spent like 30 seconds about how he's abused by his father. They didn't even go into the rest of it. Like, I'm sorry, I know enough by looking at the parents, what that boy's life was like. And they don't even discuss it. That's why this is so important because now they're placing the blame on somebody else and they're not, this is the blame shift. The parents don't want to take any responsibility for how their perfect imperfections played a part in this whole dynamic. And do you see why there's such an advantage? They don't have to take responsibility. They get to stay the child. We all do when we blame shift. I get to stay the child and demand that you heal me, that you fix my problem. That allows me to be childlike and basically scream out for the parent that I never got. I'm wanting you to be my parent. That's why we do it. And that leads us to the next piece of it and the next advantage. We are now manipulating somebody from the victim position and we're demanding they take blame. That's what happened in this situation. The parents, they're demanding this young girl who was a cutter and, you know, severe abuse in her own childhood. Like you just have two kids that are reacting to less than perfect parenting, really, well, it's abusive parenting. Flat out abusive parenting. It's not even brought up. Both kids were abused and they don't even discuss it. And then the parents, both sides are in the courtroom fighting, blaming the other from the victim position, manipulating the other side. This is why we do it, because neither parents, set of parents wanted to take responsibility for how they never dealt with their own pain and injured their kids, which led to this tragic consequence. They never dealt with their hurt from their own childhood and how they were blame shifted and placed into the worst day cycle. And it just keeps repeating over and over. That's the essence of the cycle because of the shame and denial portion. We're in denial. It's not me, Kenny. I don't have to take responsibility. I was a good parent. I did everything for my kids. That's not my fault. Well, I'm sure you did. But did you ever take parenting classes? Did you ever spend your life learning about these types of dynamics? Well, most of us don't. And that's why, like, I'm not blaming parents. Because if people really knew what it took to raise kids, I don't think anyone would have one. <laughs> like, it's just an overwhelming job to not leave scars. And that's what happens, is we now get stuck in the disempowered victim, childlike position blaming the other person, asking them to take the blame for us. I did a video on this. Did you see the Netflix documentary, uh, The Bad Vegan? It's about a woman. She was a vegan uh, chef, kind of world famous for a while. She had this great restaurant in New York. Um, it was a really trendy and she, you know, she did a great thing, but she got wrapped up with this really twisted narcissistic sociopath and Go watch the Netflix series or Netflix documentary and then go to my YouTube channel and watch my video, The Bad Vegan and the Worst Day Cycle. And here's a woman who was trapped, you know, stuck with a blame shifter. Um, but she was blame shifting back from the victim position. Like if you listen to her, now that you're aware of how this works, every time they play audio of her on the phone with him, like they play it and she's arguing, she's fighting, she's placing it like he tells her what to do. And instead of saying no and defending her, she'll say no. And then victim blame right back. Like, you know, just 
She's just loving the lack of responsibility from down here, the disempowered victim position and the anger and angst in it. She loves to fight from here, but she won't take ownership. She won't say no to him and leave the relationship and take care of herself because she's getting too much from staying the victim and blaming him and asking him to be the parent she never had. And that's what we all do. She argued nonstop from the victim position. It was all about control. And this is what we all do when we're here. It's we are all about control. And that's what happened in that other documentary where the, you know, the girl, they say she convinced him. I disagree with because of how emotions are made. That's a different topic, but where he took his life. And this is, this is a result of parents who blame shifted their children. They bullied them. And so they created two children that had no ability to defend themselves. Because again, what happens as a child, we are stuck. We can't get away from an abusive parent. We have to take it. And so a young girl demands we take our life. What else am I going to do? I got trained as a kid to take it. I'm going to take it. That's just heartbreaking that they were, and I bring this up not to shame parents, but to get into truth until we start talking about the source of the problem. The problems will continue. This is where it all starts. But each parent, each adult, it's not, you don't even have to be a parent. This is an adult dynamic. We place responsibility on others. And the reason we did that is all of us got blame shifted as children. And so we all stay stuck as the child and ask somebody else to do it for us. And that keeps the worst day cycle. That's why all these problems keep continuing because the shame and denial portion. We're in shame. Shame is a power play. We're playing the victim from this position. We're stuck as less than. And so we don't take responsibility for ourselves and we victimize ourselves and place that responsibility on others. We blame them and then go into denial that we've set all that up. These are the people that pick narcissists. Me, pick two of them. Like, I, like all this stuff I'm talking about, the only reason I figured it out is I'm all of it. I was the master at playing the victim and blaming the narcissist. And then I realized, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm equally responsible. I'm not to blame. I'm equally responsible. We both played an equal part in this happen in every narcissistic dynamic, in every toxic dynamic, in, in, in any situation. We play an equal part and we have to take ownership of that. That moves us into adulthood, out of victim blaming, out of codependence, into interdependence, into truth. And from truth, we can love. From truth, we can build connection and relationship. And that puts an end to the last thing I want to talk about, which is the denial portion. We are out of reality. We're not in truth that we are doing this to ourselves and to others because we don't want to admit these truths about ourselves because we most, most of us just haven't been shown that this is what it is. But do you see the bigger reason we don't want to admit the truth about ourselves is that means we're going to have to grow up. We're going to have to be responsible. And oh, I just about started to cry. Ultimately, that means I'm going to finally have to mourn the childhood I never got. I'm going to have to deal with how my parents blame shifted me and hurt me. And that there's nothing I can do. Nobody's going to fix that wound. It's gone. My childhood is gone. My parents took it. Your parents took it. They weren't there for you. And that's why you don't want to stop blame shifting. That's why you want to make the other person responsible because you don't want to sit in the sadness that your parents were perfectly imperfect. And in almost all cases, they did want to adore you. They just didn't know how. Now, there are those cases where they were so severely abused, they didn't know how to do it. But now it's your turn to stop and you've got to face, wow, I will never, even though I'm trying this blame shifting game and this victim position game to try and get somebody to be the parent I never had, it's never going to work. And it just, the worst day cycle, it keeps, the errors keep compounding and I keep feeling worse and worse 
and more depressed and lonely and now I won't even be around people. Now I'm just going to have animals. Like we just, our life did, just gets sucked out of us. We're just dying inside or we've basically died and we've given up. We've lost the will to fight for our life. We may be on the planet, but we're not living life. We're not participating in it. We're just existing. That's what it leads to. I wouldn't, wouldn't want that for anyone. So I'd encourage you for this aspect, go watch my video, Codependency, the five core characteristics, so you can learn about the differences between the disempowered or wait, falsely empowered and disempowered codependent because that's what's at play here, okay? So then what's the solution to put an end to this blame shifting and the worst day cycle? Well, you have to become an expert. It's as simple as that. If you want, where would you like to go on vacation? Is it Hawaii? Is it Bali? Is it Indonesia? Wherever it may be, how are you going to get there? Can you get there from where you are? Like if you just stay in, and maybe you're watching this sitting in your chair, laying in your bed. If you just stay in your bed, are you going to get to that destination? No. What are you going to have to do? You're going to have to put a plan in place. You're going to have to invest in yourself. You're going to have to buy a plane ticket, pack your bags, get up, take a shower, create an agenda. Like you got to do a lot. It's a lot of work to go on vacation. Right? And now everyone feels when they come back like, oh, I need a week off just to rest after vacation because I did it was so much work. Same thing with this. If you want to heal the worst day cycle, if you want to stop being a blame shifter, if you want to learn how to mourn your childhood, and that nobody's gonna be the parent. No one, your parents won't do it. They're not gonna come back. It's now your job to be the parent you never had. You have to do that for yourself. You're going to have to commit to getting out of bed, to getting out of your chair, and doing the work to get the vacation you want. And the vacation is peace inside you, loving who you are, forgiving your parents. This parenting job is brutally difficult, horrifically difficult especially with no training and especially with a society that keeps them in denial. See, we're, by not telling the truth about these things, that's what's so fascinating to me, the people who get upset with me that say I'm blaming parents and destroying families. No, they want families to stay in deception. That's the death of, there's no, if you're in deception, there's no relationship, there's no family. It's just a facade. None of it's real. I don't want that for you. And that's what happens. Every single person. I tell this to people and they never believe it until they get to the other side. I'm like, even if your parents are gone or even if they're alive, you go deal with this stuff and you heal this. You're going to feel closer to your parents than you ever did. You're going to, that sense, you know, because we all are like, God, if my parents just would have given me this, you get that feeling. That's what this process gives you. No one believes it. And then I always get the email or the phone call. Oh my God, I can totally deal with my parents now. You get everything you wanted. Well, how do you get it? Well, right now you can get access to my complete emotional mastery method for only $47 a month. It's literally like having 150 to 200 private coaching sessions with me. That's how deep and profound this material is. It walks you step by step by step through the complete process of healing the worst day cycle. It allows you to mend the wounds between you and your family. It allows you to take responsibility for your life. It teaches you how to be the parent you never had. It teaches you how the worst day cycle was placed into you, how it's operated throughout your whole life and created all the self-destruction and gives you the skills and tools to know how to change it. It shows you how to change your life. Because again, if you're here and you want to get here, what are you going to have to do? You can't be. The person you are has to die figuratively. You can't stay this person if you want to live 
in peace and harmony and have these things. You're going to have to become a different person. Well, that requires a decision between two things. Are you just going to just continue getting ready to be ready? Like a lot of you watch my videos and you're getting ready to be ready to do the work. And that's fine. That's part of the process is to stay in that place of, oh, I'm going to watch a video. Oh, that was, yeah, that was good. And then you go on with your life, keep living the cycle, keep blame shifting. Nothing changes, but you're, it's way back here because you're telling you, you lie to yourself and say you're afraid or you can't afford it or whatever it may be. Those are the lies you're telling yourself. That's the shame and denial. What that really is, is I don't think I'm worth it. And plus, I'm not, I, I don't want to break these bonds with the family, even though I know they're destructive. Um, if I challenge these things, they won't love me, which is all baloney. And this is what I mean. When you get to the other side, you realize it's baloney. <clears throat> that you have your best chance of having connection with your family and feeling connected to your family by doing the work. But these are the lies you're telling yourself because you're getting ready to be ready. You're not in enough pain yet. Like you need another divorce. You need another narcissist. You need more pain in your life before you get into reality of, oh my God, I have got to stop this. I'm done. This is killing me inside. I've got to let go. Well, for that person, they're ready to burn the boats. They're like, I am never going back to this person or I'm not living here anymore. I'm going to Bali. I'm going to Hawaii. I'm going to the Florida beaches, whatever it is that matters to you. You need a purpose. You have to know why you're doing it and you have to be done with this. If that's where you are, well, <clears throat> then the complete emotional mastery method is perfect for you. This method reconciles all your demons. So you basically have a choice. <laughs> you can, it's that, that, what's that classic line? Face your demons or they'll bite you in the, uh, you know what? So which one are you? Are you just getting ready to be ready? Or are you ready? Ready to get rid of your demons and have them stop biting you in the you know what? If you are, I'll leave you links in the description so you can get started on your subscription today and walk through the process of healing the worst day cycle, stopping the blame shifting, healing the pain from the past, and living the life you were meant to live. If you think, if there's someone in your life who's done getting ready to be ready and they're desperate to turn their lives around, please share this with them. Please leave me your comments and as always, enjoy the journey.